Oh, hey, we're back in Hailfire Peak's icy side. So now we can do some little exploration around here. We got this really, really old oil rig. I know that it's old because there's a switch that's rusted and we'll need something heavy to push it down. Can't stand. Also, frozen notes. I wonder what a frozen note would sound like. Maybe it's like the sound a brass instrument would make if it were really, really cold. Which isn't really that different, so I don't really know why I'm saying that. There's also another dragon here, but we're not going to be doing that right now, because instead, I'm just going to hop into the first door I find, and where does it lead? Oh, okay, Icicle Grotto. I keep, like, getting lost in the icy side of Hellfire Peaks just because, number one, I don't spend a crap load of time here, and number two, I don't know. This Icicle Grotto doesn't really have a whole lot going on. I mean, the living ice cubes are kind of cool, or icicles, I should say. But it's a mostly empty area, just like too many other areas in this game. I still enjoy exploring them, but it's just kind of like, you could have condensed this a little bit. Normally I would say something about that ledge that I went up recently, not looking like it would be slippery, but then again, everything's made out of ice in here, so everything should be slippery. No, I do not know why I set that Minjo free. In fact, what exactly is the difference between Jinjos and Minjos anyway? Maybe they're both aliens from the same planet? The Minjos don't really have anything against you, they just have things against the Jinjos, so I'm not sure why they would attack you. Actually, better yet, why not like, actually get collected by Banjo-Kazooie, and then they can fly off to Jinjo Village, and then they can attack. Maybe that's the reason the great Jinjo family is gone, rather than the explanation given in the game, which is that the Hag-1 just sort of bulldozed through them. Anyways, we're gonna split up here, just because I know that there's a thing that I need Dragon-Kazooie for. But before we do that, we're going to have to... Blow this place to smithereens! And by that I mean just loosen these icicles a bit. It's a bottomless pit, but apparently it's not that bottomless because these icicles just kinda either A, hang in place, or B, just have a bottom. I, I, I don't know. I think I hit at least two icicles with one grenade egg earlier, so that was pretty neat. Yeah, I'm gonna make a save state just because I don't trust myself on these platform. So the way Kazooie jumps around, I'm more likely to, yeah, do something like that. That's why we make save states. Okay. Come on. Ah, jeez. You know what? Forget it. I'll get it with Banjo later. Because that's not the reason I'm split up for the time being. Kill you. And we're gonna go up here. And we're going to randomly turn and go into the red door. Man, I see a red door, but I want to paint it black. Can't say why, though. Yeah, this is that empty honeycomb piece I saw from earlier and wondered why I couldn't reach it. Oh, well, that's why you can't reach it. Low ding- thank you. Ah, should have seen that coming. Alright, so we make our way out the door from the Icicle Grotto, and we find ourselves on a very large platform situated above a scenic silo. Oh hey, first try he actually talked to us. That was nice. You can glide around and stuff. It's kind of like flying, except it's not. Another one of those Z is Z moments there, because he says, Jump in the air and hold Z. Don't need flight pads or feathers red. Yeah, it's definitely Zed there. So we're gonna use this gliding move immediately and grab this Cheeto page up here. You can't jump up to it, but it's easier just to glide, glide over. Let's see, where do I want to head off to next? You well, know, I could go to this upper platform, but I haven't done what's necessary to make a thing appear here yet, so I'm not sure why I'm over here. Alright. Hmm. I'm actually not really sure what the heck it is I'm doing right now. I think maybe I should head over towards the... Yeah, let's just go to the 
warp pads. And then we can switch over to Banjo with the split-up pads. That'll work. It took a really long time to load because we're in completely different areas of the level. Alright, Banjo, you should be able to clear the gap between the icicles using your amazing double jump. Come on... Okay, that wasn't so bad. Oh, crap! Didn't realize I almost missed that. Alright, sweet. I got myself some 20 nuts, so I think I'm gonna warp now. Okay, now that we're back in Icicle Grotto and I have my gliding move, I can make my way over here to this Jinjo. And yeah, we got more Jinjos and I died. I die a lot in this segment. So now that we've done all that, all that nonsense, let's actually fight the boss. And I really love this dialogue here. I have big feet. That's nice. And he's really protective of his shoes, despite the fact that he knows he can't fit in them. So, we're going to wait around and listen for the... Oh, there it is. So, he's going to start firing stuff at us. Come on. There we go. And once again, the boss of this level is going to trigger his own demise by giving us access to the shoes. Also, Walch, 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 Walch. My poor, enormous foot! Well, that was a fun character. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing him, because that's the last time we'll see him. Shoes! Ah, I love this music way too much. Yes, I know I saw those paw prints over there. It's just easier for me to go this way, in my opinion anyways. So, now that we're up here, it's boss time, yet again. Okay, good, I was at full health. I wasn't really sure if I was. I've been taking so much damage lately. Oh. And as you might expect, since we used ice eggs during the last fight, we'll be using fire eggs here. I guess by using Dragon Kazooie, I am kinda sorta cheating, because I have unlimited fire eggs, but... The challenge of this level isn't really going to come from me running out of fire eggs, so it's not really that much of a deal. He likes anchovy pizzas? Oh, now I'm definitely gonna kill this guy. So yeah, it's another boss fight, and it's pretty much identical to the last one. It burns! How did he say it burns? Could have been... Oh, right. I'm... I'm getting my dragons confused again. I, I, it makes sense that he would say it burns. But I'm, like, in the ice area, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, he must be really cold, because that's the thing I'd least want to be. I would much rather be hot than cold, in my own personal ex opinion. And, yeah, this boss fight is going by pretty quickly. You just kind of go on a little tour of this upper area. You can fall off of the side, so... Don't do that. That's a very bad thing to have happen. But you will use all four cannons this time around. You didn't in the last one. Just because it was easier. And if you play this in replay mode, I believe... Uh, this one is the easy one, and the red one is the hard one? I might have that backwards. It's not based on when you fight them in the main game, it's just always one way or another, and I'm not sure which way it is. So, thankfully for us, Kazooie reminded him that, oh yeah, he's a boss in a video game, he needs to give us something for winning. Now the last guy wanted to go to Witchy World, this guy's going to McJiggies. It's the second reference to McJiggies, it's the only restaurant that you're allowed to bring in food from at uh, Jiggy Wiggy's Temple be weird if other places had exclusive agreements like that. Like, it, yeah, at the White House, you are only allowed to bring in, I don't know, Chicago-style pizza, considering where our current president is from? I don't even know if he's a fan of Chicago-style pizza. I know I am. I love that stuff. 
So now we no longer have the scourge of giant fire and ice balls raining down on us, so now we can freely explore around this area. I'm gonna grab myself some more frozen notes. And now it's time for me to do something despicable and deplorable and just downright undefendable. But first, let's have this nice conversation with this ice cube. Man, the ice cube is nice and all, but I really want that Jinjo. Huh, this ice is really strong. I wonder if... Okay. <laughs> yes, I just brutally murdered that ice cube that already mentioned to us that they had a family. Banjo, you sick, sick bear. Well, now we're in Boggy's igloo. Uh, if you remember Boggy from the first game, he was really bad at riding a sled. So now he's gotten super fat and has a house with everything made out of ice. Including ice books. Which are kind of pointless because I don't think there's any way you could possibly read those. I guess they're there just to impress the neighbors, cons considering the fact that Boggy doesn't strike me as the type of person who would read that much. So as he's going over these TV features, some of them hold up to modern standards like 100 hertz refresh rate. But then he mentions three T three remotes, and I'm pretty sure that would be a that would be an anti-selling point. Yeah, he's complaining about being hungry, so we hand him that dead fish we got out of the hot water earlier, which I guess got cooked by being in the hot water. Uh, who am I kidding? He's, he'll probably eat just about anything that's edible that we would get, have to give him. If we still had any of those burgers from Witchy World, he'd take those. In fact, I probably still do. That is at least the third character in this game that has tried to eat one of the Jiggies. Uh, including also that snake that you have to sneak past in my hem temple. And hang on. Cheers for the burger back at the fair! I don't know why, but I've always read that as a song. Anyways, the cavemen from Pterodactyl Land, the Oogle Boogles, those tried to eat the jiggy that they gave you because they thought it was one of those, like, things with chocolate inside. So yeah, here's all the kids that we went to all this trouble for saving. Uh, this kid doesn't really have any hard feelings about us swinging our backpack at him earlier, so at least he enjoys uh, jumping on the bed almost as much as the fair. You know, it really wasn't a fair, it was an amusement park. Do British people call parks amusement fairs? 